Okay, this part is over chapter 4. Uh, this is the part on integument and uh, its derivatives. This is a rather long presentation, so it's going to be broken up into several smaller parts. Um, so, let's begin with a discussion of the integument. The integumentary system, which is our skin, our cutaneous membrane, and it it the derivatives that are of skin that includes sweat glands oil glands hair and nails all of these are part of our integumentary system now skin functions there's a wide range of functions and this table is in your textbook but just to go over a few things it protects us from mechanical damage lumps bumps things like that um, it is actually a physical barrier that contains keratin, uh, toughened cells. There are fat cells below that cushion the blows. Um, and we have receptors that warn us if we are doing something dangerous. So we've got you know heat receptors, and if I put my hand on a stove, I'm going to pull my hand away. Um, it protects us from chemical damage, acids, bases, because the keratinized cells are relatively impermeable. Again, they contain pain receptors. So if uh, damage is going on. Um, additionally, the cells, uh, the outer layer of cells are dead, so you can't do anything that would hurt them. It protects us from bacterial damage, and that we have an unbroken surface, and the bacteria that are going to cause us harm really need to be able to survive within our body pH range, which is 7.35 to 7.45. Four or five, and the sweat on our skin, as well as uh, other secretions, make us have this a slight acidic surface to our skin, which actually prevents pathogens from surviving very long. Um, so these secretions will inhibit those bacteria that will cause problems. There are phagocytes that are also in skin in the uh, connective tissue below, which will eat up any kind of foreign substance that happens to make it past the skin. This protects us from ultraviolet radiation, um, damaging the effects of sunlight. Melanin, which is produced by melanocytes, offers us that protection. Now, I will say that melanin does give protection, but it is not the greatest protection in the world. Uh, the fact is that a really heavy tan only gives you an SPF factor of 3 or 4. Um, skin protects us from thermal heat or cold damage because we have heat, cold, and pain receptors that can pick up on that damage. It keeps us from drying out because we have glycolipids and keratin that kind of act as a waterproofing for us. It aids in controlling heat loss or heat retention just depends on the situation but with blood flow to the skin um, we can increase heat loss or we can reduce blood flow and retain more heat we also have sweat glands which will allow us to carry uh, quite a bit of heat off with just a little bit of water remember the heat capacity the things that we talked about in our discussion of chemistry it aids in the excretion of urea and uric acid. These are contained in perspiration produced by sweat glands. And generally, these are released through the kidneys. However, if you've known someone who has uh, uh, is undergoing dialysis, you may have become aware that after a couple of days, they get this sort of yellowish uh, crystal coating on them which is called a ureic glow and that is basically the sweat glands trying to get rid of these toxins through the surface of the skin we also uh, synthesize vitamin d sunlight uh, reacts with cholesterol to um, produce us a, a precursor to vitamin d Now, skin structure itself, it has multiple layers. We have the epidermis, which is our outer layer, which is stratified squamous epithelium and keratinized, generally speaking. 
Um, the connective tissue below is the dermis. And actually, what we think of as skin or the integumentary system, a large part of that is the dermis. The fact is that uh, leather is really the dermis. It doesn't really contain much of the epidermis. There is a layer below that called the hypodermis. It is not part of the skin. It is that layer that lies between the skin and the uh, organs below. So it has areolar tissue. There's adipose tissue. So there's a little thin layer of fat in that all over our bodies, which acts as a little bit of padding. So basic skin structure. If you take a look at this, we have multiple layers of epithelium, and there are several layers mentioned here. I'm going to focus on the stratum corneum, stratum basale. The others you should know, but those are the two that are um, most important in our discussions. And then you have this dense, irregular connective tissue, which makes up the dermis. So, layers of the epidermis. The very bottom layer, the one that is in contact with the connective tissue below, that is our actively growing layer of cells. It's called the stratum basale because it is the lowest cell. It's also called the stratum germinativum. Think about what flowers do in the spring. They germinate. And all of the cells from... Uh, in our skin are derived from this layer. It germinates from here. So this is the deepest layer of the epidermis. It lies right next to the dermis and the cells are undergoing mitosis all the time. One cell stays in contact with dermis. Um, the other cell, the daughter cells, get pushed upward to become superficial layers. And as they're pushed upward they mature and then start to die off. Now, the next layer is the stratum spinosum. And it's called that because when you stain these cells, uh, you draw fluids out and they get this sort of spiny, prickly appearance. So these are still living cells. Well, the stratum granulosum, these are cells that are in the process of dying off, and they have granules in them. What they're doing is they are producing keratin and other protective substances that will fill the cell up so that when it reaches the top layer, which is the stratum corneum, these will be these uh, tough dead cells. Now, there is an additional layer in really thick skin. We're talking about hairless skin of the palms, hands, soles of the feet. Um, it's just a little thicker, dead cells uh, from deeper levels. The stratum corneum, that's the outer layer of the epidermis. And again, we have these sort of shingle-like cells filled with keratin. This is constantly being rubbed off. Um, it takes about 120 days for cells to travel from the stratum basale to the stratum corneum. And as I mentioned in lecture, we're shedding this all the time, and the majority of the dust that's in your house, that's actually shared skin cells, or shed skin cells. Now, summary then. Uh, from the deepest to the most superficial, the stratum basale is the deepest, I have this highlighted because I want you to understand the characteristics of the stratum basale. This is the place where all of the cells grow from. This is in contact with the connective tissue below. This is the layer that has um, active mitosis so that growth continues to occur. The stratum corneum, that's the layer that we see. That's our surface layer. That layer is constantly being shed and replaced with cells as they work their way up from the stratum basale. Now, underneath the epidermis, we have the dermis. And it consists of two layers. We have a papillary layer, which has little projections called dermal papillae. Um, it contains 
little capillary loops. It has pain receptors and touch receptors. There are actually no pain receptors or touch receptors in the dermis or the epidermis. Um, these are all at this lower level. Now, uh, the papillary layer, um, I guess if you peeled it back, it would look somewhat like a what an egg crate mattress. Below that kind of bumpy layer, we have the reticular layer, which is the deepest layer. It has blood vessels, sweat glands, and deep pressure receptors. So, you know, when you pluck a hair out, uh, you are going into actually the reticular layer, which can be quite painful. Overall, the dermis structure, a lot of collagen elastic fibers located throughout it. Collagen fibers give skin its toughness. They are interlaced and going in every direction. So again, this dense, irregular connective tissue. Um, and then we have elastic fibers, which give it a little bit of stretch. Now, just like all elastic, uh, the elastic in my underwear after a few years gets all stretched out. You know, brand new package, nice springy, but after a while it just stretches out and doesn't bounce back and just kind of hangs there. And that's what happens to our skin. As we age, we damage these elastic fibers. And one of the things that leads to this damage is exposure to ultraviolet light. And so you just, you lose that ability for it to bounce back. We also have blood vessels, which play a role in temperature regulation, as well as getting nutrients to that uh, stratum germinativum layer of the epidermis. So this graphic kind of gives you a sense of what we're talking about. We have the epidermis here, made of multiple layers of stratified squamous epithelium. We see in the lumps and bumps through here and you can particularly see right there where the dermal papillae are that these little raised areas make up our reticular area or reticular or i'm sorry our papillary layer so these raised bumps make up the papillary layer and you can see in there certain receptors for pain um, you can see other sensory materials, and you can see capillary loops. As we go deeper, we're into the reticular layer where we have hair shafts, we have sweat glands, a variety of types, we have uh, muscles which will attach to the hair shaft, which actually allow those muscles to stand upright, and we have you know, uh, deep pressure receptors, as well as blood vessels. The very bottom part we're talking about the hypodermis or subcutaneous tissues and remember the hypodermis is not part of the skin. Well, skin has a variety of appendages. These include glands which are all exocrine. Remember endocrine secrete into a uh, just sort of leak into a flu uh, the fluid in the body, they are ductless. Whereas um, glands, uh, the exocrine glands, have ducts which secrete out onto a surface of some sort or another. These include sebaceous glands and sweat glands. Um, we also have hair follicles, hair, and nails. And we're going to talk about the characteristics of each of these appendages in a uh, later presentation. So this is where we're going to stop and we're going to pick up talking about sebaceous glands in our next portion. Thank you.